Welcome in to Five on Your Sideline. I am Corey Miller, and tonight is a big night. We've got the Cardinals in Cleveland, a focus on our homegrown high school graduate for City SC, and of course, some high school highlights. And it truly is a playoff highlight smorgasbord tonight. So let's get right into it. First up, Kirkwood and Ledoux for a state lacrosse championship. Some nice passing sets up Nate Obertino in front. He finishes it off for Ledoux. Then Ryan Bishing. He gets the ball for Kirkwood. He would not be denied. Check out that score. Whoa! So fast. Kirkwood goes on to win the title 20 to 11. It's their first lacrosse crown since 1995. Next up, we're going to Freeburg. Big time rivalry for a sectional softball title with Columbian Town. Freeburg's a powerhouse. Emma Otten gets into this one for a two run blast. And Samantha Rolanitis did the rest. She's been almost unhittable all season and she was literally unhittable today. She threw a perfect game, 15 up, 15 down, as Freeburg wins 12 to nothing in five innings. The Midgets are sectional champs and absolutely on fire. Some drama in Mascuda, Waterloo and Triad for a girls soccer sectional title. Look at the determination by Triad's Katie Burton. Never gives up, gets a great goal. Later on, Waterloo is gonna even it up. There is some confusion, but the ball's in the net, tie game. This was a classic and went all the way to penalty kicks. And this is the one that ended it. Abigail Schaff scores for Triad. The Knights win 2-1 to one in PKs to advance in the playoffs. How about some state volleyball championship action from last night? Slew and Lafayette for the Class 4 crown. A pair of big time spikes from Jack Kraus and Will Blasdale. That gets the job done for the Junior Bills. They roll in three sets to win the state title at Class 4. Congrats to Slew. Back to soccer. At O'Fallon, it's a good time to be a Panther. They won their first girls basketball state title in the winter, and just about every program had an impressive year. That includes girls soccer. They're 17-3-1 and have a 45-goal scorer as well, and they're also after their first state title since 2021. They are hungry to get back. You don't know that until, until you win one, and, and, and once that happens, then it's like, well, we got to get back there. We've got to do this again. It's just something special about us, like our grit and just never wanting to give up. I just, I, there's something in us. Oh, I'm so excited. I like to brag about it. I think it's something that I'm proud about, and I'm glad our school's like dominating in sports right now. So how about an O'Fallon update? They keep on rolling. It's a six to nothing sectional win over our producer Jeff Coleg's Manuka team. Sorry, Jeff. The Panthers keep their run alive for another state title. Huge game on the baseball diamond tomorrow. Francis Howell at DeSmet Class 6 quarterfinals. The Spartans boast some elite starting pitching and are looking to get back on top after a title back in 2019. The Vikings under Tony Perkins are always elite and have the sting of a third place state finish in their memories from last year. Something's got to give. A lot of these guys experience that Final Four, and you know, I'd be lying if they don't want to go back and finish the deal. Well, we won the state football championship, so uh, winning the state baseball championship my senior year would be just an amazing feeling. It's what everyone wants at the beginning of the season. It's what everyone strives for, and right now we have a chance to go and do it. Class six is a bear. You said it. Um, Francis Howell is obviously high school baseball royalty. Nothing but respect for that program. I've known Coach Perkins for a long time. He's been very kind to me for the last 20 years as I've come up as a young coach. Um, so we know we have a huge challenge in front of us. Hey, a couple other scores to highlight tonight. DeSmet plays spoiler to win a lacrosse state crown over MICDS. It's the Spartans first since 20, 2002, that is. And on the softball diamond, Waterloo and Belleville East advance in the playoffs. 